foremost, I want to thank God for uh, the opportunity. I, I feel very blessed, uh, to be honest, to be here in this position. It's been an amazing training camp. I have an amazing team for my manager, Rick Morgan, to my promoter, Bob Barron, and uh, Robert Garcia, Charles Trembley, and uh, Jose Contreras, who's our assistant coach, and Miguel Diaz, who's my cub man. You know, I, uh, I couldn't have done this without my family, without the support of my team, without the support of Top Rank. And uh, we're here, and uh, now I'm the uni unified uh, champion in, in the 140 pound division. Uh, I came here with one mission, so focused just to fight, you know, to do my fight. And uh, I really didn't put too much attention on the venue or the network. I was just so focused uh, to go out there and just be myself and go back to some of my fundamentals and taking my time. I know I've done the mistake before as uh, to come into aggressive and, and uh, me and Robert, we worked this last nine weeks just on going back to my rhythm and the nice jab and doing everything I did when I was an amateur. What took me to becoming an Olympian, I went back to that. And uh, the punches that hurt most in the professional level are the ones that you don't see coming. So, you know, Marie Sucre was, he wasn't expecting me to be explosive because I went back to just using my jab and uh, close to the range, little by little as the fight went. And before you knew it, I was able to, to land my combination and I think that surprised him. But he's a tremendous uh, champion and I also want to thank him and his family and his team and uh, Eddie Heron, Matchroom Boxing, The Zone, they, they did a, a tremendous job this week taking care of our team. Uh, I'm having a great time, to be honest. It was a great, great week uh, here in Texas, in Arlington, Texas. And, and again, it was a blessing for me to, to showcase my talent in front of a new crowd a new new media, new people to really get to know who was there or is this. You talked a lot about your dreams as a, as a young boxer coming up in the amateurs about winning a world title, but then even a bigger deal for you, you said, was to unify the titles, which you have now done. Can you just sort of express what it has meant to you then to now have the second title? I mean, the first one was great, but now you got what you really wanted was another one. You know, I'm still in shock a little bit, to be honest, because I, I I didn't go after a vacant uh, title. I went after a guy who was a world champion, who was a humble world champion, and uh, and he, you know, he a humble champion is always going to prepare himself at his best. So I feel very proud of myself and my team uh, because we got the jump done. Jose, okay, how much how much you think that knockdown in the first round of Scott Scored knockdown threw him off his game? Because he seemed like it took him a while to get back in the fight. You know, was a Step. Well, the, the job, uh, the round went kind of, quite, quite of, kind of fast the first round. It always goes really, really fast. Uh, you know, but you know, he, uh, he went back to doing what he did with Alex Acedo, and I think, you know, he, the plan for me to show uh, Marie Sucre was that I'm a whole different fighter than Alex. I'm a lot stronger than Alex. I'm a lot faster than Alex, and I could box better than Alex. And I think I showed all those three qualities. Uh, and uh, I just tried to overwhelm uh, Marie Sucre since the first, since the first round, and. I could see the way he was kind of losing his balance every time I would touch his arms. Uh, even though the punches were landing clean, I was, you know, I was, I was able to take control of the fight and I just stayed to the game plan and uh, saw my opening and, and thank God I <laughs> that did enough. Jose, oh, yeah. I know a lot of people question why you left Freddie Roach after winning his title. Uh, why does it work so well with you and Robert? <laughs> Uh, Robert, well, Robert's a very similar guy like me. You know, we're first generation here in the United States. We work, we come from a, a hardworking family. We work in the fields, and and uh, his whole his whole gym is he's he's well. Uh, he's always so focused on his on his, on all his fighters. He's so you know he's so optimistic and so motivated to train us, and that makes it easier for us to do our job. You know, when we're in the ring, when a, when a coach sees us and he and he sees you with that with that expression that. Uh, you got what it takes, you know, to, to, to make it far, then it, that makes it easier for me to do what I do best. Um, you know, Freddie Roach is, a, is an amazing uh, legendary trainer, and, you know, and I was blessed to train with him for four years. And, uh, you know, he, he, he showed me something that I didn't know before, and, and I'm always going to take that with me. You know, and I just added more to my game plan with Robert. Uh, I, you know, his gym is very family-oriented. Uh, the chemistry that I have with my coach, um, it, it keeps getting better and better, and you know, as time goes on, he, he tends to he learns how to understand me as a fighter better. Uh, you know, he knows how hard I work, and and I'm very coachable, and I think that's very that's one key for a fighter to succeed is to continue being coachable. Jose, can speaking go, of can that, can you elaborate a little bit on what your game plan was for Marisa going into this fight? 
my game plan was to close the distance, but uh, not close it in a way where I was going to be overly aggressive uh, to where he saw everything coming. You know, I wanted to, I wanted to uh, surprise him and, and land my combinations uh, by using different volume on my punches. Some punches just tapping on some punches, uh, really sitting down on them. And I, you know, I felt like I was throwing that jab, uppercut, jab, uppercut, jab, jab, touching to the body. Uh, just so I kept them uh, where he's, you know, waiting for for me to really commit, you know, and to, and I felt like I had I kept him thinking because he didn't know how how hard I really hit uh, until the moment came, you know, and uh, that was the game plan is to is to use my rhythm and and and, and keep my move my, my head moving forward uh, side to side, breaking at the waist throughout the whole time, not giving him a second to to land anything while I was closing the range. Well, so it looked like you. Really wanted to invest in the body. Was there something in the previous fight with Booker that you felt that you and Robert felt that it was the right game plan to attack the body? Someone like Marie Super is, is, is you know he's long in range. He's gonna he's gonna he's gonna commit too much on his right hand. He's gonna he's gonna be looking for the right hand all, all night. So uh, one way one way to do one way to, to take that right hand away is to to hit that body shot and so you could keep it stationary the way I did against Amir Mon. Uh, Mira Mom was also known for having a tremendous right hand, and I, you know, I kept the, I kept that right hand station. He kept the right hand station because he felt the me touching him to the body with the with the left hook. I know he in an interview before he said that he was going to try to take away my left hook. Um, I just didn't know how he planned to do that, you know. But uh, my plan was to take away his right hand too. I just, you know, I was just so focused on on doing that in the ring in the fight. Jose, now that you got the WBO boxing super series is going to have their final. Between Regis and uh, Josh Taylor in October, how much attention to that fight? I'm, you know, I'm keeping, I'm keeping uh, close attention, uh, attention to to the fighters in that tournament. Um, you know, and uh, I signed up to fight the best. To be honest, um, my goal is to fight the best. You know, I'm not afraid to to you know take a take a loss in my record. I'm, I'm, I I want to go in there and and really. Bring the best out of Jose Ramirez, and the better fighters I fight, the, the better Jose Ramirez I'm gonna, you know, be able to show. And uh, you know, it just I'm waiting for that tournament to finish first and foremost. Um, you know, I, it just depends on that fight takes place. I do plan to also uh, stay active too. I owe it to ESPN and Top Rank for allowing me to come to, you know, the zone and and uh, match with boxing. So I owe I owe them a, I owe them a fight back before the year ends. And then I, you know, they, they fight towards the end, and we could be looking at the fight early 2020. Jose, we talked about, and Robert, we talked, congratulations, by the way. We talked about Virgil Ortiz Jr. and the impact he had on you in training, and for both of you, can you can you feel it in a, in a fight like this? I mean, he's a, another 140 pounder from Dallas. Listen, Virgil Ortiz, he's a monster. That, that kid's a monster. That kid, that, that uh, he's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna do really good in the sport. That, that guy, that guy, there's no. I sparred Manny Packer, I sparred so many fighters and no, no one hits and, and has that, that drive like, like Virgil Ortiz. Robert, and do you have anything to add on that? I, I agree, you know, he's, uh, you know, he sparred him and uh, Jose always wants the toughest sparring out there and he always told me, you know, Virgil's the only one in this gym that gives me that, that kind of sparring, but I'm also a trainer that I also know that it's not an everyday thing, you know, we got to switch it around, have different sparring partners. You know, Jose, Jose wants to be in there with the best, and uh, he, he's always telling me, when am I going to spar Virgil, because that's what he wants. But, you know, it's also my job to, to take care of not only Jose, but also Virgil, because they, they, both, they both go at war, you know, they, they, they go to war. So I got I to look out it's, for both it's, of them. It's, it's funny, because uh, um, two, it was two, weekends, two and a half weeks ago, I, I was doing a 12-round session, and, and I finished my 12 rounds of sparring, and Virgil had finished six rounds of sparring. And Virgil goes, hey, Jose, can, I, can you give me two more rounds? And you want to ask Robert, because Robert was going to say no, right? <laughs> and so he told me, and I was like, yeah. So I, went, I just jumped from one ring to the other, and I gave him two extra rounds. So I did 14 rounds, and he did eight rounds. Uh, but that's a, that's a, that, that just shows the tremendous uh, talent that you, that you find in, in, in a gym like Robert Garcia's. And I think that's something that was lacking at 1.2 at, at, the, at the wild card boxing gym. Um, there are so many hungry, undefeated young fighters. They're not sparring partners. They're future world champions, um, and I was, you know, there was I was going against four, three, four, even sometimes five to give me the twelve round sessions. Okay, oh, now that you got the WBO belt to go with that WBC, have you thought about being undisputed champion, being the second person behind Bud Crawford to do that, to have that opportunity? Yeah, it would definitely be a blessing for me to become the undisputed world champion, but one fight at a time, you know. And uh, I'm gonna go back to uh, to work and 
And I'm humble for, for this situation that I'm in, uh, but I'm still hungry, man, and I want to continue getting better. And You know, one fight doesn't define someone, you know? This fight doesn't define Murray Super. You know, this Murray, Murray Super is a humble world champion. He's gonna, you know, I, I guarantee he's gonna come back a lot stronger. Uh, this fight only makes, only puts me, this fight only shows me where I'm at, you know? Personally, I, I, at the end of the day, the, the criticism and the people's opinions and what people think, that's all, <laughs> I really don't pay attention to that, man. It's, it's, it's what I feel, and, and I feel like this, this is all the type of fights that, that, that allow me to see where I, where I place myself for myself only, you know? Uh, and my opinion towards myself is the only real thing that matters. And uh, and this 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 humble opportunity that I got, I took advantage of it, and I'm and I plan to to continue being a humble champion moving forward and, and going after the best. Well, sir, um, I, re I remember talking to Bob, you know, last year, and Bob said that Robert's such a good teacher. Besides the fact that you know you're first generation Mexican Americans. You know, your dad's worked in the field. What what type of impact has Robert had on you, from a personal standpoint in the ring? You know, in English, it doesn't, I really don't have the, the proper words in English, but in Spanish, it's like, you know, I, we got the, we got that cormillo, you know, the, the, we got the, the, the will, tenemos cojones, you know, uh, tenemos like ganas, and we have this, this, this will to, to move forward and, and not to take a step back, and he has it as a trainer and I have it as a fighter, you know, and those things match up right, you know, and we create a, 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 a strong team together. I got a, I got a question for Rick. Um, You've been with Jose for a long time. You predicted a knockout. You won't be eating Whataburgers. Uh, can you reflect a little bit on how you're feeling right now? I'm still going to take him to Whataburger. Yeah. I, 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 I love Whataburger. No, you don't. Yes, I do. So I've been with him since the amateurs, and I've seen him get up for a fight three times in 10 years like that. Once was in Brazil when he became an Olympian going into that fight. The second was New York with the Miriam Mom. And then the third was tonight with Hooker. He gets up for these big fights, and um, he's just a di he's just a different fighter. He he lives for that moment. Um, he's always wanted to fight the best. Uh, you know, he also understands the business side of stuff, but yeah, he he wants the best. And I can't wait to see what the future holds. I'm ecstatic. You know, it's been a 10 year journey to this point, but uh, can't wait to see what comes next. The bigger the fight, the bigger the performance from Jose Ramirez. You and Regis have been going back and forth on social media for a couple of years now. Anything you want to say to him? Look, first, I, I, I respect Regis a lot. He, you know, he's one of the best fighters in the world, um, but I talk shit better than him. You know, I just, it's not my fault. <laughs> no, you don't. I don't got to fight him in the ring, I but outside the I ring. Fight, but the difference, I talk shit and I can fight, so I think I got a one up on him. Outside the ring, he's like. He's the fighter. You just talk. <laughs> outside the ring, he's like one of the opponents he fought early on, like 2 and 20 or something with me. He's not going to win, but. You know, he's, he makes the sport live. He's one of the reasons why that division is so hot. Between him and Jose, this win tonight, I think the 140-pound division becomes, uh, you know, a staple point in boxing, you know, moving forward. There's some very big fights to make. And, and as you saw with this one, top rank makes big fights. They'll sit down at the table. They'll figure it out. Everybody comes together. So, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to that moment. I, I hope uh, I hope he goes into Taylor's backyard and, and, and takes, care, takes care of business. Would you, would you give me and that? also, also, we, of course, and Jose acknowledged that we saw a guy sneaking into Mo Hooker's corner before the fight, and Terrence may have to, down the road, pay the price when he gets in the ring uh, with uh, Jose Ramirez in one of the biggest pay-per-view fights that can be made. If, 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 if progress takes care of business overseas, um, no, no, I'm not, I'm not waiting for I'm, I'm here to stay for a couple more fights. Happen? We we yeah. sit down and we make the biggest <laughs> fights that are possible. Now I'm there, are, there are there are mandatory <laughs> fights that he has to do. Uh, they WBO WBC gave us permission to do this fight as long as we do the mandatories. We get rid of those mandatories, finish them, and then we'll do the biggest fight that's possible. So for, so for sure we got mandatories in between. Yeah, These yeah, yeah. Uh, that's what the organizations are telling us. And the fight will be big. I'll, I'll fill the Fresno State football stadium if the that, guy that, next that, to me allows it. Yeah. If he says so. Robert, I want to ask you a question. Um, I wanted to piggyback off of, uh, you know, Ramirez told us what makes you special. What makes Ramirez special to you? Look, just like he said, you know, we, we, we come from, from similar backgrounds. You know, I'm, I'm 
older than him, but my parents worked the, the fields just like his parents did. Uh, you know, my older brother and sisters, they all worked the fields. Me and Mikey are the only ones born here in the United States. Until 87 or 88, that's when my family was became legal in the United States, you know. Jose comes through the same, you know, so we, we, we live the same life. And then in the gym, obviously, he, I see the hunger that he's got in, in, in the gym, and it just motivates me motiv motivates me to push him even harder. He, he loves to work. Well, what was like, I was going into the support of the Latinos here today, even though you're not from Texas, yeah, a lot of them support you. Yeah, you know, <laughs> you know I, I think it's appropriate for me to say that there are so many great American stories great stories of guys coming up from poverty and fighting. This story of Jose Ramirez is a real American story. The family came over, the mother and father, undocumented. Uh, Jose was born in the United States. They're now uh, American citizens, his, his parents. Uh, but it wasn't easy. Working in those fields is backbreaking. Nobody wants to do it other than a lot of Mexicans and people from, uh, from Central America. It's very, very tough work. And Jose knows where he came from. He was a member of the Latino Water Coalition that fought for water rights for the growers in the Central Valley. He's a standout person for immigration rights, for what's happening in this country with the attitude of the guy in charge towards immigrants, it's an absolute disgrace. Jose has spoken out forcefully and eloquently uh, in the Central Valley and other places. And he is a tr true leader in his community. And that is something really that is even more important than left hooks and jabs. It is really important to have somebody from this boxing community be as much of an activist as Jose is. And I'm very, very proud of him. The only thing that would have made this night better for me if instead of Mo Hooker in the ring, Donald Trump was in the <laughs> other corner. Hold on, touch, touching on, on Mr. Aram's mentions of Jose's investment in his own community. That outfit that he wore tonight, those shorts, those shoes, that shirt, we're gonna go back home and we're gonna auction that off and give it all to Maximum's family um, when we're done. And, and look, those, that attire will go for quite a bit of money. You know, we had an opening bid on his last deal we did on the cancer fight we put on in February of $30,000. That's just to open the bidding. And that was just for a pair of shorts. So. That attire, I'm sure, will get a record number when we go home and organize it, but that, that's the kind of fighter and person he is outside of the ring. Planning on having a celebration in the Central Valley when you get back home? Yeah, you know, I, I, uh, my son starts school on August 13th, so I'm going to go back and enjoy my house and, and uh, enjoy the family before he starts school and, you know, become a father and see him grow and, and see him, you know, go through that school process. Um, yeah, just you know, enjoy my family. I'm I'm a I'm a quiet guy, you know. I'm a type of guy who likes to barbecue and and hang out in the backyard. You know, I really don't like big parties or big celebrations. I'm not I'm not that typical guy. But uh, but listen, I'm I'm very blessed and I'm happy for this opportunity and I feel really good. Um, right now I feel very excited and uh, I'm just you know ready to continue moving and showing the the humble champion I am and then then. Showing you know the fans the good quality boxing you know and and one fight at a time I just want to give people my my best you know and that's all I could do as a fighter is just show my show show them my best and the best I could do and there's no doubt that that, it, that when I step in that ring I I plan to leave my whole heart in that ring and until the last bar, in, until the last bar rings and uh, you know Rick mentioned uh, what I'm about to do but I you know I I wanted to be quiet I. I they wanted me to post it before the fight, but I wanted. I was so focused on the fight. I wanted to do this something where you know we just kind of announced it in, cent in central part uh, of California, and I know I was gonna you know uh, raise over thirty, forty thousand dollars. I also have a, schol a scholarship foundation and other foundations that I got that I got started early on when I was when I first went to in the professional career. So I was planning to be in match 
that money that I raised. So I could double it and give it to Maxine's family. You know, but at the end of that, again, um, I'm, Maurice Zucker is a, he's a humble champion. He, you know, he's a great guy. He came uh, with his family supporting him. He has his kids. So at the end of the day, I'm just happy that we both came out of the ring well. And uh, we're, mo we're, uh, uh, we're fine to, to move forward and, and continue, you know, giving boxing, uh, giving the boxing fans uh, good quality boxing. All right, a round of applause for the unified champion.